Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial. In the previous tutorials, we've actually modeled UV map this environment. And why are we doing all this? Because we are trying to recreate this beautiful piece. So uh, right now, so far, we've gotten the geometry. We've also done the UV mapping, so it's ready for texturing. And in previous tutorials, you can also animate a crane and create a flock of cranes using particles. So take a look at those. All right, so, so far we've done some pretty cool stuff. Um, let's go ahead and start adding a little bit of texture. So I usually, when I go to textures, I usually go to textures.com. Textures.com is used by industry professionals. Why can't we use it, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're looking for. I'm looking for a little bit of a dark stone. So let's see what we have. If I type in stone, you're going to notice that there's a variety of stone out there. So which one do we want to choose? I think this one's pretty cool. It's a substance one. So um, let's see what other ones we've got. I might just control click on this just to open up a new tab. And uh, maybe this one looks actually kind of nice too. It's got a little bit of displacement there. I'm going to keep going down because these are all shaders. And now I'm getting to some other type of textures. Um, these are more like the flat textures that we can build on our own. But let's take a look at our granite here. Um, it's actually pretty nice looking. Hopefully it's repeating. We'll see. Um, I do have to purchase it, so I'm trying to make this free. So let's go ahead and not do that. That's too bad. But good for them for offering this. By the way, textures.com, you can download these. Uh, if you log in, you can download them for free. A limited number of them. Okay, um, keep going down. I'm going to type up here at the top dark stone and see what we get. So I just want to let you guys know that, again, I'm winging this. I haven't even tried practicing this yet. So um, I am actually going to be troubleshooting and everything with you. So hopefully you will learn from my mistakes and therefore you can not repeat them or, you know, get something out of it as well. Uh, I've noticed that some people actually like watching me make mistakes so that I know how to fix so they can do the same thing and maybe fix it. Not the mistakes, but fix the mistakes if it happens. Um, let's see. Not too bad. It's some really interesting looking stone. Kind of like this one. So I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm not too big a fan of this texture there, but that might be something close to what I'm looking for. And let's find out what type of stone this is. This is a uh, rocky moss. And let's see, what if I write gray? All right, so I put the video on pause and I just downloaded a couple of them. They're seamless. So that means that they're gonna be repeating, which is exactly what I want. So I have this type of texture, I've got a little bit of this one, and then I've got some of this. So I'm gonna try these out and see what they look like. So let's start off with the ones that are pretty close uh, in hand. So I'm gonna grab this, assign a new material. I'm gonna use an Arnold AI standard surface. And uh, let's go ahead and make this into one, the weight of the color. Plug in a color file, little folder, and let's see, it's looking for source images. That's okay. I'm going to go into my images folder and look for, I'm, I'm thinking maybe this dark gray. We'll see how it goes. And it's looking nice. Um, let's render it out just to see what that looks like. Of course, it's there's still a lot of work. For example, um, we're going to need to rough it up a little bit. We don't want it to be glossy. And uh, I actually don't mind the patterns it might be a little strong so let's go into the file let's go to the placement node and since this is repeating we should be able to just multiply this three by three and we should be getting some results right away so that's actually pretty good now the next question is what do we do about the bump map we need some sort of breakdown so that it's not so flat and perfect um, I think we might get lucky and we might be able to use the texture that we have and use it as a bump map because there are some light areas and dark areas. We'll see. Let's see what that looks like. Let's experiment. So select your item. Go ahead and click on this one, which is going to bring up the shader. And what we can do is, um, let's see. Let's uh, activate the 2D node. So let's go to geometry, bump mapping. We're going to trigger it. We're going to say file. We're going to, um, let's see. And let's grab the out alpha and plug it in and see if it let us. We'll see what happens. It's already getting bumpy. Let's see what that looks like. Let's focus on there. It's not bad. I don't see too much of a difference. Mm, there is a rise and fall, so we'll keep it like that. Maybe if there's a little bit more specularity. Um, let me grab this guy. Bump, 
bump. I'm just making sure everything's looking okay. We've got bump, we've got this, it's got repeating textures. So we can grab this guy and um, we can also invert and see what we get. Terrible idea. So I think we're just gonna leave it at that and uh, let's see what happens if I increase my decrease my standard so it's a little bit shinier therefore it makes it a little bit more uh you can see the breaking up of the textures a little bit more oh i see what's happening it's rendering through um the one i actually wanted to render which is camera shape one which is fine um cool all right so another thing we might want to break up is the specularity the specularity is looking really really pretty and uh, we wanted to break up a little bit, even though we've already done it with roughness. We also want to do it with um, with this as well. So taking the same information, I can actually just grab the R. And maybe we just want to plug it in into the specular. So what that's going to do is uh, kind of force the textures to be glossy in some areas and darker in some other areas, which is going to really help bring up those details. So I think it's working uh nicer so i think i'm going to be good with that so let's see what happens if we assign this shader to just about everything in the, according to the reference picture if i look at it a little bit it's pretty blurry um the items are pretty maybe this one can be a, a different type of texture but i'm pretty sure the structures are all based on the same type of texture so i'm just going to go ahead and use the same one so let's grab these guys and assign existing material ai standard and let's see what that looks like Close my hypershade. So we're getting something like this. It's pretty interesting. We'll keep it as is. We'll see how the rendering and the lighting comes out later. But uh, let's go ahead and work on this stone. So I'm going to assign a new material. Arnold AI standard surface. Um, we're going to, same thing, scroll up. Bring this to one. Click on this little file. Folder, little folder. And let's grab another one. So we might want to go for... Mm, let's see if this one, how this one looks. So now we can render again. So we're getting a little bit of that look. This isn't too bad, but I still feel like the placement needs to be a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and make the UVs a little smaller so that the information's a little bit more impacted. Uh, the more information's packed in every inch, the more it's going to look like it's... Um, it's realistic. So I'm kind of digging the way this is looking like. Um, again, you want to have a little bit of roughness and a little bit of specularity on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of reduce the roughness here because we want it to make it look like, we don't want it to make it look like glass. We want it to make it look like it's sand. So now that we have that, we'll just decrease the diffuse roughness, maybe the weight a little bit just to make it darker. I just want to make sure it matches a little bit better with the environment because the reference image doesn't have too much of that difference. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's go back into the hypershade. We're going to do the same trick again. I'm going to grab this guy here. It helps if I have something selected. Let's go here. And we have a... Uh, let's go to our geometry. Again, bump mapping. Let's go to file. We're not going to... We're going to attach our own file. Out alpha. Connect it. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Let's see. Let me try a different method here. I'm going to see if I can attach this R to the bump value and see if we get something a little bit. We can read it a little bit more. I'm just trying to break it up a little bit more. All right. So we've got the stone. It seems to be working. We can definitely see it on the preview. It's a little calmer here in uh, the render. But uh, I think the information is, you can see kind of rising and falling in certain areas. So that's good. That gives it that extra information. Okay, um, let's try the water next. We're going to assign a new material again. Okay, so water. Let's talk about that. What is water? Well, what color is it? Um, actually, water has no color. So we're going to change this to weight of zero, change this to black. It does have specularity, so we're keeping it there. It's all about that transmission. So I'm going to increase my transmission. It's basically glass. So let's see what we get now. Oop, let's click on 1-1. One, one. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. Um, it does have some uh, variations in the water for the distance. 
Um, so I'm going to start adding some waves to it. Now, to add waves, I can try using bump mapping. I don't think it's, um, it's maybe, we'll see. I might use, well, let's try it. Let's go to bump mapping. Let's click on this little guy. Uh, I'm going to use AI noise. And it's going to ask me, how, how do you want to do this? Well, I want to grab the R and place it in the bump value. So this is the same thing we did before. Ooh, it turned orange. Well, we'll see what that means. Uh, this is the same thing we did before. There you go. So you see the bump is already attached on the water. Um, instead of dragging that little tail on the R into the out into the bump value, what we did was just do the same thing, but um, using the uh, the channels. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, all right, cool. I like the AI noise. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit more uh, information. So now we're getting some nice octaves. We're getting a nice little, the more octaves I add, the more noise information it's going to have. So that's going to be really helpful. And, um, but let's see, what I want to do is just maybe scale it um, up a little bit. So let's see what two by two by two looks like. So now that we're getting to a more complicated renders, you're going to see that the renders are going to take a little bit longer because there's much more information here than there was. So I'm going to see what it looks like when it's done rendering. It's a little specular. So I might need to decrease a couple of things. And you can also see that we can see the ground underneath, but really we should be seeing is the reflections a little bit clearer. So I'm going to have to play around with some attributes. It's a, it is bumpy, so that's probably part of the issue. But uh, we'll see what we can get. I'm going to decrease this. Uh, let me take a snapshot here. Snapshot. All right. I'm going to reduce the octaves and then let me go back and maybe even go in here and just kind of calm it down a little bit by 0.5, the bump depth. So I want to have that information, but I also need it to be a little smoother. Now that we had the, the transmission on, we can change the color if we wanted to. So if you wanted to go for a little bit of that darker blue, we could add a little bit of tone to our water if we wanted to but the whiter it is the more translucent and more transparent it's going to be so that might be something to consider uh the ior i'm going to keep it at that you could reduce it to 1.4 to 1.5 depending but let's go ahead and keep it and then the roughness i might want to decrease it because i actually do want to re really want to get those reflections now if we take a look at this reference picture Got a ways to go, but I'm getting there. Um, there's some, the really the roughness is in the distance and it's pretty clear up here. So what I'm going to try to do, a ramp to kind of control that. So I already have my noise. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to experiment. Let's see what happens. Um, let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, hopefully I'm going to click on this. This is the water. This is my bump and this is my noise. And what I'm going to do is create a um, AI ramp. Actually, just a regular ramp. Cool. And I believe I can control the bump with a map like this. So for example, if I sign this to the color, let me just grab this and show you what it looks like. Uh, and I'm going to, let me collapse specularity here and just kind of turn off transmission for one and bring up the base we should be able to see that this is where the white area is where I want the bump to be. Okay. So I got to control this a little bit more. So I'm going to grab the ramp and just kind of bring this out a little bit because I really want that bumpiness to be in this direction. I want to turn this off actually. And I might want, it's going to be a, a pretty sharp line, but I think that's going to give me the information that I want. So we have this. This is just a color. This is more like an example of what's going to happen, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate to you that the white area is where we want the noise and maybe a little bit at the front. So I'm going to bring another white node, bring it here and then create another black node and go over here and just make sure it's black. So, whoops, I lost it. There it is. So I want a little bit of ripples around the front and then lots of ripples in the back and hopefully I'll be able to control it using a ramp. So anything white should have the ripples. Anything, anything here will be controlled. All right. So let's try it. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to remove this connection with the base because we need, we have it. And what we want to do is take this noise and plug it into the white 
part. So I'm going to click on this little box, grab the AI noise and plug it in here. I'm going to do the same thing for this white one. going to grab the AI noise and plug it in here as well. And I guess we'll see what happens. All right, let's go back to the water. I forgot to turn the weight off. And let me bring back the transmission so we get the transmission back. Really what I'm looking at is the bump map. So I'm not seeing too much of a change. So what I'm going to do next is because I have a feeling it's because I haven't connected it. So let's try that again. Let's grab the R and I'm going to plug it in here and it's going to ask. Oh, it didn't ask me anything. Okay, well, let's see what that looks like. There we go. So, so what we did was we plugged the AI noise in the white areas, which we knew where it was going to map. And now we're getting that look that basically exists here, which is ripples at the end, clear over here. And I'm kind of getting that nice effect. Now the bump is a little strong, so I'm still going to have to mess around with that, but at least we're getting the look that we're trying to go for. So let me go in here. I'm going to change the bump depth to 0.2. And it doesn't look anything like the piece because the lighting and everything's totally off, but at least we're getting a similar, similar look. I'm still worried about the stone looking so different than these guys and everything's looking pretty close. So I think this is a good place to stop. The next area that I'm going to be focusing on is the lighting. So that means I'm going to try adding some fog, trying to capture some of this nice lighting that it has. And let's see if we can try to capture some of these little highlights and uh, we'll see if we can kind of create that depth that's missing. My scene is, is looking pretty, pretty close. Everything, all the details are clear, but once we start adding the fog and everything like that, it should bring it all together. So, all right, I will be right back in the next tutorial, but we're going to talk about lighting and some fog. All right, guys, thank you. And on a side note, sorry, I keep uh, throwing things in the last minute, but please uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I really would appreciate that. It encourages me to kind of move on and continue making these things for you. Please check out academicphoenixplus.com. That's the website that I have for you. I have free downloads for you, eBooks, and also other video tutorials. So check it out in my newsletter. So if you want to know what's going on uh, with my, with everything. So again, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, Get all that jazz and I will see you next time.